I watched the video on TED Talks. A global food crisis may be less than a decade away. It was a speech by Sarah Menker. She is the CEO and founder of Grow Intelligence. It's a tech company that marries the application of machine learning with domain expertise and enables users to understand and predict global food and agriculture markets. She brought to the attention of me at least since 2009 experts have been wondering about a coming growing food crisis. The reason why we have a growing food crisis is because of population growth. And the main question is, how do we feed more than 9 billion people by the year 2050? Well, the general answer to this question is, just produce more food. We must produce 70% more food than we produce right now in order to fill that need. This question was brought to the forefront of everybody's attention in 08, whenever the global food market hit its all-time high. What this mainly comes down to is the demand for food will be increasing and supply won't be able to keep up. Now, there's no guide or how-to book on how to stay away from a global food crisis. Now, she put this into terms of calories. Because this question's always been tried to be answered by mass and saying, let's produce this much more food in terms of mass. Well, she proposes a new way to look at it and look at it by calories. By the year 2027, the world will be 214 trillion calories short. Now that's such a big number, it's hard to comprehend. And because a calorie isn't a tangible item that we can see or hold or, or feel, she put it into another perspective. 214 trillion calories is that of 379 billion Big Macs. Now, calories sustain us. They're the nutritional value in food that allows us to keep going and gives us our energy. This is kind of like looking at, in comparison, a head of lettuce, and we we'll use a Big Mac. Once you put them all together, the lettuce may be bigger than the Big Mac, and it is going to take up more mass, but in turn, the Big Mac is going to have way more calories in it. Sarah said that this was brought to her attention whenever she went back to Ethiopia, the country of her origin, after she had finished school in the United States. And her dad's first words to her were, how did you get fat? Now, Sarah wasn't gorging herself on food. She was consuming about the same amount of food, except for she was consuming calorie-dense items. 
Now, there's three ways to really overcome this coming global food crisis. First would be for the countries that are either self-sufficient in food or are export food to other countries would be to change their consumption patterns. The second option is to reduce food waste. And then the final option is to step up food production. Now, Sarah made a good point in this video by stating that if we wait for countries that are self-sufficient in food or export a lot of food to either change their consumption patterns or reduce food waste, which is what most of the conversations up until this point have been made about, we are bound to fail because we're going to be waiting on people who aren't in need of calories or food to change the way that they live. However, we can step up food production. To give you some examples of the countries that of each of these tiers would be a net importer, which would be a country that needs to import a lot of food. And that would be a country like China. A self-sufficient country in food, at least for the time being, is India. And a net exporter of food, which would be a country that exports food to all other places in the world, would be a place like the United States. Now, India and China have two of the fastest growing populations in the world which, due to that increase, is going to eventually cause India to be a net importer of food also. Now, another net importer of food right now, and will only continue to get worse, is Africa, and all of the countries in the African continent. Now, Sarah brings up a great way to help step up food production. Now China, they have a land usage problem and they really can't or don't have any arable land that or any more arable land that farm, farming can be done on. India, same thing. Uh, they still have some land, but not enough to help drastically with this coming global food crisis. The real place that has the arable, arable land that we can produce a lot of food with is Africa. Africa has a ton of arable land, arable land that can help to produce more food. Now she proposes an interesting way to do this. Her way of doing this is to commercialize farming. Now one may ask, what does it mean to commercialize farming? Well according to geographyfieldwork.com Commercial farming is farming for a profit, where food is produced by advanced technological means for sale in the market, and often very few workers are employed. Now, if we would commercialize farming in a country like Africa, it would help increase their total output as far as with food and it would also help to increase their economy. With the growing crisis that's coming and the growing population, we must find a way to stop this. After watching Sarah Menker's 
speech on a global food crisis maybe less than a decade away. I feel as though commercialization of farming is definitely a way to go. Also, we do need to find ways to reduce food waste and countries that are self-sufficient or net exporters of food do need to find a way to change their consumption pattern. I believe that through all three ways of change is the only way we are going to stop the global food crisis. And according to Sarah's data, remember, we're going to be 214 trillion calories short by 2027, which is only 10 years away. Thank you for your time. Three questions about this talk would be, are you concerned of the global food crisis? Are you willing to change to help prevent the global food crisis? And finally, which way do you think's best to change the global food crisis?